Hi everyone, my name is Andy so and this is Becoming Dr. Andy. <laughs> welcome welcome back to my youtube channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you thank you so much for watching one of my videos once again and if you are here for the second time or the third time but you still haven't subscribed please do the right thing and subscribe and if you are here for the first time i would like to welcome you i hope you do stay and become a part of my journey as i become Dr. Andy. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about National Benchmark Test, also known as NBTs. So you are probably asking yourself, what's the whole idea around NBTs? Why would they want to add an additional exam while you're having trial exams, final exams? So National Benchmark Test, the idea around them is that they wanted one standardized test across all curriculums remember that we have more than one curriculum we have the ieb the nsc dbe so it's just quite a lot of curriculums so they just wanted one test that would test your competency is everyone supposed to write an nbt before going to university the answer is it depends so some degrees do require you to write your nbts and some do not so what you have to do is you have to check with the university you're applying to check with the faculty or the degree or program you want to go to they might require nbt they might not and some degrees just require you to write the aql part of the nbt and not the maths part and some degrees require you to write both so do your research before you go out there and write your NBT later to find out that what you want to do or what you're applying for does not require NBT. But for example, studying medicine at UCT does require you to write your NBT, both AQL and meds. When can you write your NBTs? So you can write your NBTs in grade 11, grade 12 or after metric. So when do you write your NBTs in grade 11? Let's say you just finished your final exams in grade 11 and you feel like you are more than ready to write your NBTs. You can write your NBTs in grade 11 if you feel like you just want to get over and done with. But I do not advise you to do so unless you are getting at least 90 in your maths and your English. Because NBT is a really, really an important test. It is not easy so you don't you don't want to jinx your chances of getting good marks by just quickly running or rushing into writing nbt when you're not ready but if you believe that you are ready to write nbt and you just want to get over and done with i advise you do so if you are getting at least 90 percent in maths and english the reason why i say that because nbts are hard and sometimes they just accept your first results like your first mark you can't be like okay i can rewrite as much as i want to some some universities just take your first mark and some do allow you to rewrite and take your second mark but that is very much rare so if you don't want to jeopardize your chances of getting good marks i suggest you do not write in grade 11. and second one which is grade 12 this is when most people write their nbt I wrote my NBTs in grade 12 as well. I highly recommend that you write your NBT immediately after you finish your June exams. That gives you so much time to like practice because you are in your June holidays and also your mind is still fresh with the knowledge of your maths and your English because you just finished your June exams. So I do recommend that you write your NBTs after your June exams. So what if you've decided that the year after your metric, you do not want to go to the university, you want to take a gap year? 
in that case you do not need to rush into writing an NPT you can just focus on your child's and your finals and simply write your NPT after your matric exams because you won't need to apply to any universities so you can write either in December I highly recommend you do that because the knowledge is still fresh you are out of your final exams you can simply write your NPTs then do you have to rewrite your NPTs every time you apply to a university? The answer is no. You can write your NPT once and submit the same results across all the universities that you apply to. Let's say now you wrote your NPT while you were in metric and something happens and you can't go to university the following year. Then what happens? Do you have to rewrite your NPT? The answer is no, you do not have to. Your results for NPT are valid for the next three years. For example, let's say you wrote your NPT now in 2022. You can use the results of for NPT to apply for the academic year 2023 in the university. If you are not going to school in 2023, you can apply for the academic year 2024 in the university. If you are not going to school in 2024, you can apply for the academic year 2025. So those are the years that are valid for your NPT results. So do not confuse it with applying in 2025 for 2026 because that is beyond the three years. Do you understand? So it's the th the next coming three years when you'll be doing your first year, if I put it in simple terms. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. I'm just going to say it once again. Your NPT results are valid for the next three years, which means if you are not doing first year next year, you can do first year the second year or you can do first year the third year but not the fourth time do you get what i'm saying some people simply say nbt results are valid for two years of which if you can just memorize that that is completely fine do i write the nbt in person or online i think currently it depends or it's optional i am 100 percent not sure before covid we wrote in person and i think now because the covid regulations have been lifted you would need to write in person even though i'm not sure that you are given an option to write online that is something you have to go back and research yourself but i think at this point you, you are given an option to whether you want to write online or in person but let's say there's no covid and it's just like under normal circumstances you'd go to the online website for nbt i will link it on my description box you go there and you check your nearest nbt spots or nbt writing centers it should be near where you stay basically and you pick your date and you pick your time and then you arrive there i think it's around half past seven or before eight because the tests start really really early and then you go right do we use calculators the answer is no no calculators required no extra notes required no dictionaries required remember they are trying to test how much you can think logically can you can like they are trying to check they are trying to test whether you can do mental maths basically how much you know how much knowledge you have so calculators are definitely not accepted and dictionaries are not accepted. Do you write NPTs for free? No. There is a application fee or NPT fee. I don't know what they call it, but it is 260 to write both the test, the AQL and the maths. So you have to pay 260 upon your booking. And please make sure that you do not miss your date or you are not late because a rebooking requires you to pay another 260 again what do i need to bring to the venue when i'm writing my nbts 
so what you need to bring most importantly your id you cannot write your nbt without your id with you or any proof of identification you have to bring a pencil if you are writing in person you definitely want to be using a pencil and the eraser i suggest that you at least have two pencils or three and also bring lunch water a fruit because this you're going to be there the whole day basically each test is three hours so you write three hours in the morning and a break in between and then three hours after so it's a total of six hours you're going to be sitting down and writing you're not going to get a chance to go out and buy food and all of that so bring your lunch with you your id your pencil and your eraser you do not need a calculator don't even bring it you do not need any formula sheet they give you a formula sheet even though it is not really that helpful i must say so just to summarize everything nbts are like an exam basically where a lot of people who booked for that day and that time come to write so you might write with people who are not from the same school as you it's not like a one-on-one -on -one exam it is an exam where a group of people write so you sit like it's it's your normal june or final exam and if you are writing in person you have to book online even if you're writing online i think you have to book online pick the time pick the venue pick the date where you will want to write your nbt you go there with your id your pencil your eraser and you are ready to write the test three hours long so the aql is english and something like qualitative quantitative literacy i'm not sure about the name and the second test is pure maths so those are the two tests you'll be writing it is three hours each and you have a break in between also please note that nbts are a multiple choice so there won't be any way they're asking you to describe something or to calculate something and they're giving you marks for your steps of calculation you just have options there to circle or to tick whatever the instructions are so it is a multiple choice where you have to if you are calculating something you calculate on the side and you give them your final answer i just had to point it that out for those who didn't know what do they test in the nbts so as i've said that there are two exams or two tests number one is the aql one which is english and something that's just like maths literacy so for the english part according to my experience it felt like english home language so the english is not easy like for me i did english first additional language and that was not it so they test your vocabulary they test whether you know like synonyms you know if they putting like reluctant in a sentence and they'll be like what word you can replace a reluctant with if you do not know what reluctant means it, therefore you won't know the synonym of reluctant something like that they will test your i'm not sure if they do test punctuation but it's just like basic 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 english knowledge that they are testing even though i found it very very hard i shared my nbt's results on the video where i was talking about the requirements to study medicine and how i qualified so if you want to know what i got for nbt's go back to that video so the the other portion of it other portion of the aq of course it's something similar to maths literacy so they test data handling they test statistics they test measurements they test probability they test your distance velocity time stuff so it's mostly around um it's more it's more like maths lit the aql test is divided into two components as i said the academic literacy which is called an al which is the english and quantitative literacy yes which is the ql which is more or less maths literacy yes so i'm just gonna start with the ql i'm not gonna do the english part but i am gonna share with you exemplar questions 
I'm either going to post a link on my description box or I will share a Google Drive because I made a Google Drive with past papers and resources for NBTs. So if you want to access that, please put your comment, your email down below and then I will share the link with you in case I cannot link it on my description box. Please make sure you subscribe though. Help me help you. <laughs> so first question is data handling. So you will get something looking like this, like a graph and they are asking you to interpret the graph. I am not gonna read over the question or attempt it. I haven't gone over the questions as I said. So this is just to give you a feel of what exactly you are expecting and as you can see it's a multiple choice you just work it out and choose one answer and number two is the shape dimension and space so you basically have to know your your volume and your areas as i said they do give you a formula sheet with all the volume and whatsoever but if you cannot apply those formulas or think uh or think around it you'll find it very very difficult so do practice that and also quantity number and operation so they can give you something like this this seems like a short question i can read say a primary school has 40 teachers and 160 learners in the school what is the ratio of teachers to learners if you know your ratios this would be simple and obvious your answer being one is to four i suppose i haven't done maths in a while guys but i think we can quite agree with that and the change in rates it's something like this um asking you the speed it took for this person to arrive where where which one will have arrive faster you know that kind of thing so they're basically playing mind games with you and you have to be able to think logically around it and work it out and also as i said ratios so they would give you a question like this where you interpret like a table and they were saying okay just like this question i'm not gonna go over it but i think it is kind of like evident on what they're actually asking you so this is a bit more easier than the met component and also measures of central tendency where they give you data to interpret either in the form of graphs or in just the form of raw data i don't think they will ask you like arrange in ascending or descending order no it's not as simple as that as i said it's a multiple choice so you have to be able to interpret your data as well and also probability know your probability if you know your probability from your maths you should be fine you should know what to do so let's go to the maths exemplar questions um also i'm not really going to attempt them but i'm just going to show you the kind of questions they test so as i said algebra expressions your your trigonometry and i'm just looking through this stuff guys and i'm just thinking i have no idea what's going on i haven't been doing maths since high school and i'm just like oh this is wild if they were to tell me to solve a question here i wouldn't be able to i can't remember i think but basically guys know your what is it angle of reductions even forgot what that is but know your trigonometry these are the kind of questions they're going to be asking you so guys for these exemplar questions i do not have any memo if anyone has a memo please share with each other i am just going to be sharing with you these exemplar questions i found them online i'm going to share a link or share as a google drive like google folder because i created a google folder especially for you guys where i collected all the resources the resources i found for nbt so as i said if i can't link it on my bio or you can't access it via my description 
please comment with your email address and i will send them to you via email so there's this website that i found online it's called len.olico.org they have really really nice nbt practice questions and they also have like videos where they teach you how to solve the problems please note that this is not a sponsored post they didn't pay me i'm just doing this for you guys so you can go to the website i will link it on my description and go there and practice your questions this is how you can learn your nbt they also have study resources and online whatsapp tutors that are for free so you can contact them via whatsapp so that they can help you as well and they also have these nice booklets where they have like all the notes and the practice questions as you can see they divided the practice questions into practice one practice two and you can just go there and do it as like an online exam where they give you questions you choose your answer and you check your outcome you can practice as much as possible they have the aql part and they have the maths part i hope you guys are gonna find this very very useful as i've said this is not a sponsored post anyhow they didn't pay me to advertise their site but i'm just helping you okay go out there and slay that nbt test i've plugged you also they have like youtube videos on how to solve different type of questions as you can see this one it's like the basics of fractions they have like functions and all the type of maths questions and i also i saw that they have like grade seven eight and nine lessons as well so do go check it out it is really really good what happens if i fail my nbt so as i've said you can go rewrite your nbt but some universities accept only the first attempt which is your first results that you got so if you failed just check what the university you're applying to whether they do accept your second attempt and also guys as i've said NBTs are really really important it's not an easy test don't rush into writing it without you being ready make sure that you are ready before you write it this test can be a deciding test whether you get accepted or rejected universities do have a minimum requirement for nbts so it doesn't matter how much you do in your final exams if you want to pass if you want to fail your nbt they might reject you from the spot so do take them seriously and it can come into your advantage just say for final exams you didn't pass really well but you got a very high NPT mark they can prefer you over someone who got average NPT and average final results do you understand so this test is really really important it is as important as your metric final exams so make sure you go out there and you do your best so we've come to the end of the video thank you thank you so much for watching up until this far if you have any questions please put them down in the comment section i'll be very very happy to answer your questions i would like to wish you all the best with your nbt if you are writing next week or this coming month i really really wish you all the best Please like if you found this video helpful and please share with your friends and classmates. And lastly, please do not forget to subscribe. I'll see you on my next video. Bye.